I think if I grew a full beard, I'd look just as good as AJ Bowen. Nah, not even close. Hey everyone, welcome back to Horseball Film Review Edition. Now it's been a while since I've done one of these, so I apologize for that. But uh, my oven mint fresh out of the horror oven. I bring you The Rites of Spring. Um, this is uh, directed by Patrick Reynolds, starring uh, Anessa Ramsey and A.J. Bowen, who I may or may not have a man crush on. But fans of both of them reuniting from, um, they spent, they were in the film together in The Signal, which is a great independent horror film. Uh, it would have been cool if Justin Wellborn was cast in this as well. It would have been a full Signal reunion. But um, the story is, look at this cover. Really good cover artwork. I just hate companies when you put, shame on IFC Midnight or whoever did this, uh, put the quote right in the middle of that really cool artwork. Um, you could have put it down here or up to the top, whatever. It's just, it's just annoying. very annoying. Anyway, um, this just came out last week, so very fresh, out of the horror oven, and uh, basically starts off with a, a little prologue saying how back in 1984, um, several, I believe it was five um, in the South, five teenage girls were kidnapped, um, went missing, and have never been found since then. Um, and basically every year after that, for the next, the following 24 years, the same thing would happen every spring that... Um, young teenage girls will go missing and they would never be found. Um, that's how the film starts. And then proceeds to tell the story of Vanessa Ramsey's character, Rachel, and uh, Ben, A.J. Bowen's character. They kind of go, their two stories kind of uh, go parallel with each other. They go back and forth and tell them what's going on between their two lives. Um, Rachel is, her and a friend had a rough day at work. So they're um, drowning their sorrows in a little bit, a uh, few beverages at a bar. And um, afterwards, she, um, they both get kidnapped. And then it goes on to uh, Ben and his girlfriend in a hotel room. Uh, completely unrelated story. Um, they are planning a kidnapping themselves because Ben is kind of hard on his luck, having some problems financially and a lot of debt. So a uh, friend of theirs or an acquaintance of theirs has planned this, um, this kidnapping of this affluent, um, I don't know if he's a politician or a businessman, um, kidnapping of his daughter, hold her for ransom and try to make a couple million off of it in which they'll split and Ben will then hopefully be able to uh, solve his financial debt, his financial problems. Uh, they call this guy um, a socialite that the um, the guy whose daughter they, they plan to kidnap um, but they don't really say who he is. I think he just owns a business. Um, they actually may actually they don't say they may or may not say what he is early on but you eventually find out who he is exactly. But anyway, so they, these are unrelated stories, two kidnappings going on um, separately in, in the two characters' lives. Um, of course, um, things do not go as planned with Ben and everyone else involved in this kidnapping. They're, they kidnap the, uh, the socialized daughter, plans to bring her back to this abandoned school where the money drop-off will happen. They'll collect their money. Um, the plan was Ben, main thing, he seems like a decent guy. Um, they insinuate that. He's kind of nervous about the whole thing. He wants to make sure that no one's going to get hurt in this. Of course, this is a film. Nothing goes as planned. And shit kind of hits the fan once uh, the money drop off. Money exchange is supposed to happen. That first part of that film, or after that, is really when the film to completely switches to a totally different horror subgenre. Um, but that first, that first, I don't, know, I don't know how long, about a half hour or so, um, with the kidnapping and all that, it's done really well. Um, a lot of tension. Um, it's, it's really thrilling and, and you're really engaged in what's going on. Um, it's really well done. There's a, yeah, it's just, both kidnappings are really cool. Uh, Nessa Ramsey's character, Rachel, ends up 
in uh, kind of like a, I guess a southern farmhouse where uh, a guy hangs her and her friend up. And uh, it's cool how it weaves back and forth between her dealing with that and then uh, Ben's character and his girlfriend and the other people involved with the kidnapping of the, uh, the businessman's daughter. So it's cool how it goes back and forth. It's really tense. Both, both situations are very well done. Um, and uh, then suddenly is the shift. And if you've heard about this film, you've probably already heard about um, how this film kind of combines multiple horror subgenres. Some people have complained about that. Some people love it. I personally love this this aspect of the film. Um, this where I'm gonna, for the second half of the film, I'm gonna be, as I warned you, pretty vague, because I think um, the less you know about the film going into it makes it all the more better, more enjoyable. I knew pretty much everything about the film going into it. I was really excited about it. So I read up on it and um, pretty much heard all the spoilers and whatnot. So, um, but I still ended up enjoying it, but I just think had I gone in completely blind about it, or at least not knowing where the story was heading in the second half of the film, I think I would've liked it even more. And that's why I'm going to be really vague with this. It switches, completely switches to a, a, a different horror subgenre. Um, I'm not going to say what subgenre that is because that will probably give away a lot of stuff, but um, let's just say you'll be, horror fans will be really satisfied the direction it goes in my opinion. Um, a new character is introduced uh, for the second half of the film. A badass character. Uh, really cool. Um, there, It remains all the qualities that made the first half of the film um, a success in my book, the tension, um, the thrills, good performances, atmosphere, all that is maintained throughout the second half, but just done with a different subgenre, which is really cool in my book. Um, obviously, this is the first movie who's tried to do that, have multiple subgenres within one horror film. Um, I gotta say, by director Patrick Reynolds, I think it's a risky thing to do, but um, obviously, you're gonna deal with continuity issues and whatnot, but I think he did a really good job with it and succeeded in my book, and that's what really makes this film um, refreshing and unique um, in my eyes. Um, there's some great individual scenes within that second part of the film. Um, the set pieces are great with that abandoned school. Stuff goes on within there. Um, really cool, um, very desolate area, um, creepy ab abandoned building. Um, there's also woods outside that they end up um, you know, traveling through. There's a fantastic scene with Rachel um, and this new character in a, in a cornfield, which is really great, great vibe, great atmosphere. Film is shot well. Um, there's some, I'm gonna call it a gory film, but the gore that is in it is done very well. There's a couple of really pretty brutal scenes. Uh, there's some great imagery. Um, some of the victims within this film um, end up with like these animal, I guess I'll call them masks over their head and kind of strung up on a cross. Really cool. Um, this is a good film that would be good to watch both, of course, in the spring, but also in the fall. Um, just has that vibe to it. Again, I don't want to give away too much of the things that happen in the second second half of the film. I just think it's better that way. You'll enjoy it more, the less you know. But you just got to take my word for it on this one. Um, again, good cast. A.J. Bowen, Nessa Ramsey, kind of stalwarts within the, the indie horror scene. Um, the other performances are good. Um, again, cool atmosphere, a fantastic character introduced. One thing you have to keep in mind, which will really help, because there definitely are, I don't want to call them plot holes, but there's some open-ended open -ended situations left. Um, and you got to realize there is a sequel for this film. Originally, Patrick wanted to um, shoot them consecutively, one right, right after another. Due to financial limitations, he was unable to do that as planned. So I'm not sure if he's already filmed the sequel or they're about to film it, but it's no question in the works. Um, which, so when you go into that knowing that, or into the film knowing that, it definitely helps with some of the loose ends. But it's a film that really, aside from the ending, a lot of those ends are tied quite well throughout the film. Um, some of the questions that you may ask um, are answered throughout the film. Um, I love how the two stories weave together really nicely. Um, so continuity is there in my book. Um, there, of course, are some questions left open, but I think it's cool. It just makes you, it doesn't frustrate you. It just wants you, um, it leaves you excited to see them, to see them answered in the sequel. I cannot wait for the sequel. Um, I hope that it, everything goes all right with it and it, it's done um, in a relatively short time, hopefully very soon, maybe next year. But at last time I read, they hadn't started shooting yet. Uh, but I highly recommend it. It's refreshing. Um, sorry for the vagueness on the, 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 
you know, the second act of the film, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it um, if, you know, going into it like that, when that tonal shift changes and that genre shift changes. It's, it's really cool. After I watched this, I honestly was sitting there smiling. I enjoyed it that much. Um, not a perfect film, of course, but uh, really good, damn good indie horror film this year. It's been such a great year, I think, this year for indie horror. Lots of great indie titles. Um, if you don't want to take my word for it, if you want to be a jerk in that way, not just trust me and go fucking buy it. I'm just kidding, of course. But you should trust me. You should know by now to trust me. But there are other means to see it before you go out and buy it. Um, this is at various, at least one that I know of, um, a rental, um, a store. I don't know if you have it around me, around you. It's called uh, Family Video. Um, I know for a fact it's there, and they have a, they actually have a sale promotion running right now where you can rent any new releases for a dollar. If you have one of those near you, you can rent this for a buck. Um, it is streaming as of as of the other day. It is streaming currently on Netflix. If you have Netflix, go in the living room, check it out. Um, but honestly, guys, this is definitely worth worth an own, worth a purchase. Really excited about the sequel. Um, and give me your if you do end up seeing it, definitely give me your feedback. But uh, again, not my usual ultra descriptive self, or my usual, if you want to put it this way, long-winded self. Going to be vague, but uh, atmospheric, fun, good performances, um, some good imagery, just a lot of fun combining. I think it's just great combining a couple almost like two almost like two movies in one basically and i think he succeeds very well keeps the continuity and all that rights of spring Patrick reynolds brand new 2012 go check it out i will definitely try to get more reviews in soon um more than i have been lately after the holidays all more time there's a lot of great new and old films that i want to share with you guys and do reviews for horrors ball season finale is coming up you do not want to miss it december 27th it is the documentary behind the horrors ball I'll put the link to the trailer for it in case you missed it. Check it out. Really excited about it. Do not miss it. December 27th, season finale. Um, right to spring. We'll see you soon. For Horrors Ball and the Horror Happy Hour, I am the Headbanger. Remember, scare yourself and each other. Have a very black Christmas. We'll see you soon. I'm out.